Hey guys, I got a really cool, you know, blast from the past. Do you guys remember the hugely popular game, Flappy Bird? It was huge on iOS and Android, and some really good programmer actually programmed the game to run on Arduino Uno. So I thought, let's have some fun with it, put it in a cool enclosure, and we'll have the game working. So we're going to go over the parts list that we're going to need for this whole project. So obviously, you know, everyone's project could vary from mine. Some people may not want to put it in closure and build something around it, but in my instance, I will. So the three main things everyone's going to need for this project, one to begin with, is obviously the Arduino Uno, the microcontroller that's going to be driving and controlling everything. We're also going to need a 1.8 inch SPI TFT screen. It's an SPI screen, so SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Basically this screen, unlike most LCDs people are familiar with, this doesn't have a video input like composite, HDMI. So the Arduino Uno will be driving this TFT screen. And we're also going to need a, a little tactile switch. I don't know if you can see that, it's right here. But I chose a very little one because I'm going to be making an, an enclosure so I need it small. You're also going to need a 10k resistor this is going to help control the current when the push buttons put since i'm making mine portable i also need a battery this is a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery that i got from a playstation 3 controller actually i got the battery and the tactile switch from a controller just trying to reuse parts i'm going to need a switch because mine's going to be portable so i'm going to need it to have it be turned on and off and for this particular SPI screen, since I got a cheaper screen, I didn't get the Adafruit one, I'm going to need a 100K resistor to put voltage to the backlight. And I'm also going to need a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. So my main idea for this project was to make it portable and build an enclosure from it. And I thought, well, I could 3D print one an entire enclosure but then I actually had the idea that my brother's iPhone 5S was washed and basically got destroyed so I gutted it inside and I kept the shell and some of the plastic pieces to it and I thought how cool would it be to actually build it inside of this so the, I guess the main thing is that the iPhone 5 is actually really thin and it's not all that large and I thought it'd be a little bit of a waste to waste this whole Arduino Uno throwing it in here, desoldering all the you know the USB jack, power jack, all the pins and that, the GPIO. So I thought, well, why don't I just rip the heart of it out, the AT Mega 328IC, and actually just hand solder everything in here, so it'll all fit and it'll be a cool portable form factor. So I want to begin by looking at the Arduino code we will be using for this project and I want to first begin by giving complete and utter credit to the original creator of this project. Um, I know I'm going to butcher the name and I'm really sorry but it's Themo Stoko Benetotos. If that's your real name and I butchered it I'm really sorry. But he's the original creator of this project and I took this his code and modified it to work and he did an amazing job writing this code. His code was really easy to work with and it made what I did so much easier because it was really easy to work with. So basically this code makes an Arduino Uno control a little screen so it displays all the colors and basically lets us play Flappy Bird. So when he chose the Saint Smart 1.8 inch SPI TFT screen and this screen is based around the ST7735 which is a TFT driver IC so it's going to give the, L, the little TFT screen a higher frame rate and a little bit more vivid colors but the only issue with this is the screen itself cost $18 and for my projects I felt like that was a little bit too much so I got a SPI screen, same size, same resolution, everything, but it's not based around the ST7735. So I had to take his code and modify it. And I gave credit to myself here so whoever works on the code next could understand the person who worked on it before. But So I had to modify his code to make it work with my screen 
So we will obviously, as we discussed, we're going to be using a non ST7735 SBI screen. So we're going to upload this to the Arduino and look at the code and see how it runs. So I uploaded the code to the Arduino Uno. Then I took out the 328 microcontroller chip and threw it on the proto board. Then I ended up making all the physical connections between the TFT screen to the AT Mega 328, just so obviously you can make sure that it actually can run off of the Arduino Uno. So I basically, on the website, he lists all the connections between the Arduino Uno and the TFT screen. I wrote them down here. The pin numbers for the Arduino Uno. Then I looked up a spec sheet between the 328P and the Arduino Uno, how the, the AT Mega 328 is connected to the output pins of the Arduino Uno and which ones go with which and I wrote those down like so which Arduino pin corresponds to what AT Mega pin and I connected all that up and I ended up putting the crystal oscillator on here and I hooked up the 3.7 volt battery just to make sure it all runs like this you know before I begin throw it in the case and then I ended up finding out that it wouldn't turn on right away I ended up putting my finger right here and I thought it was just a loose I thought it was like a loose connection or something but I ended up finding out that the, the voltage pin that gets hooked up to here is also down here and right next to the voltage pin is the black light pin that you're supposed to connect to a positive voltage so I ended up, there ended up being enough continuity in my finger to make the black light work so when I throw it inside the case I'm gonna have to make sure I uh, I make sure I throw like a one mega ohm resistor on there, probably 100k, something like that. But so I end up finding out that it does work outside of the Arduino Uno, and I can get it to run and it works perfectly. So so now we're about ready to begin to throw it inside the iPhone and start start soldering everything up. So right now we're going to have to get the dimensions of the LCD. I'll be using an iPhone 5 LCD, but that's it's going to work the same because they're the same dimensions as iPhone 5S. So I'm just going to begin by drawing a square just so I can see so I can get the outside dimensions of the screen. So to begin with the screen is 56 millimeters wide. Gotta love my pro track, oh, my caliper. 122 millimeters long. The, the button is 10 millimeters. The diameter is 10 millimeters and it's 3 millimeters in. So I'll draw a circle here. 10 millimeters, 3 millimeters. So I'm also going to have to get the dimensions of the TFT screen. So the screen is 46 long. So 46 millimeters and it's 36 wide. So now one of the main features that's going to be difficult to recreate is this little curve that all these screens have. So the way I do it is on the standard college ruled sheet of paper, I always get one of the sides to be parallel with one of the lines. So right now I'll use the long side. And it looks pretty good right there. Then I'll draw a straight line. Then I'll draw the other line and, and just follow all the way through, follow that curve. Get a rough. So as you can see that this line right here fell perfectly parallel with the lining of the paper. So this way I know when I draw these straight lines I know that they'll be perpendicular and meet at a perfect 90 degrees. So I want to take my protractor and, all, and both these sides I'm going to continue straight. So here I got it, and I'm going to continue straight. And this other one, I'm going to continue straight. So now these two points meet at a perfect 90 degree angle, 
So I'll be marking with the protractor where it's 45 degrees, making a, making a straight line from the origin or at this corner, straight line. Then I'll follow that line with the caliper and that's about oh four and a half five millimeters so I'll just say five millimeters to give me a little bit more air and now I know how deep to make that curve now with all these me I don't know why but the video cut out but see now we have all the dimensions and everything we're going to need so we're going to take this these measurements and, th and throw it in a 3D modeler program then we'll have it we'll have our 3D printer go ahead and print it So I just got the board printed up and I just tack glued it on with some hot glue on the, the I guess the surround that was on the original screen and you know for how quick I measured the screen up and you know 3D modeled and just printed, I only printed it once, it fit pretty well. I did, it was just a little bit too wide so I did have to um, sand it down a little bit but it was nothing major so I'm extremely satisfied how good it fits for what a quick measurement I did. Um, I checked in the the TFT screen fits and everything so I basically just touch the corners up with some hot glue and I'm gonna just super glue around the surrounding areas right now just so it's a little bit stronger So I have everything in their spot right now, so it's about time that I start gluing everything together. So I'm using this broken lightning cable just to secure this um, the light, the 8 pin jack into the iPhone. And I'm probably just going to repair this. Like this broken cable right here, I'm going to repair it and I'm going to put a 3.7 volt lithium uh, charging circuit on it just so it protects the battery in there I almost was going to throw a little dab on here for the battery push it flat Yeah, I definitely have enough room to work with here. And I also have the switch at the top where it's easily grab, like someone can easily grab and switch it. This is the only place I can get it to fit. So let me just put this in here. So most of the pins for the uh, the TFT were on this side right here. So I'm probably going to glue it this way. So I don't have to cross over as much. 
onto the IC, but I guess before I glue it, I'm just going to go ahead and just trim all some of these leads down. But now that I got the, the leads all trimmed, it's ready to go in here. So I want pen one over here. So that definitely gives me enough room right there to start it to. So I should label that pen one fourteen and fifteen right there. Oh, that ended up being a little bit more complicated than I thought it was going to be. I really thought it was going to be a simple project that I'd be able to do in a couple hours and, you know, get together an awesome looking thing, something really cool, you know, but I think the idea of making it all fit inside the iPhone 5 shell was just a little bit overzealous. Um, it, it just, there was not enough working room for, for everything I really wanted to do. You know, I got an outcome for it. I actually didn't finish the project. It works. It's just not to the level I wanted to. So as as I got to towards the end, I just sort of gave up on it and just made it work. Um, but no matter what, it was a good experience. Though this was a good project, I liked it because it was my first experience working with SPI TFT screens and understanding how the code works for them to make them run. So you know, that was a good learning experience there. And, I'll definitely be able to use that on future projects and um, it was also like my first time using my, my 3D printer, you know, I've had it for a little bit but with school and you know traveling all the time for my sport, I ended up, I ended up becoming so busy I never got the chance to use it till you know I just moved into my house and you know life sort of slowed down a little bit and I've had more time and you know I thought you know for a first project on the 3D printer this would be good because I'll learn the settings of how to work. You know, my first 3D print, I got it to print perfectly. It's stuck and everything. So it was a really good learning experience. I just kind of disappointed it didn't turn out as good as I thought it was going to be. But nevertheless, let's just take a look at it and see how it runs. So my original idea was, you know, I would put Bondo and like body fill over the whole thing and make it super smooth and make it like look all glossy and shiny. But as I got deeper and, you know, things weren't panning out like I envisioned to, I sort of gave up on it. I was like, well, I just want to finish it. So even like the home button, I just ended up using one of the buttons from the old PS3 controller I had since everything in here is basically off of PS3, you know, the tactile switch in there, the battery and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, why not? But whatever. I mean, it was a good project and it works in the end. So we just let me slide it on. Perfect, now I can just press the button. Oh, that sucked. 
Okay. <laughs> Falling under the pressure of having the camera on me. Okay. There we go. There we go. You better flap you damn bird. Woo! See, like I said, it works, and I just—it's just not exactly the the vision I had. But oh, I—I I, I guess I hit the top. So, well, hope you guys enjoyed this build. Stay tuned for the next one. And if you guys will, are going to be at the 2016 Detroit Maker Fair, you should stop by my booth. I'll have all my other stuff.